It turns out that Everybody Knows That was actually a song called Ulterior Motives, a track used in an old 1980s pornography movie. If you're still curious... Yeah, see, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm saying that bullshit. In the ever-evolving landscape of digital content, media gets made almost every single day, while old media gets lost- Yeah, if I had to say my favorite so far, I'd probably- I'd probably say the Barnyard one, cause like, I- I really like, you know, um, like the Barnyard movie, not the series, but like, you know, the actual movie, I think it was pretty fire. Everyone knows that song, and the origins of where the backroom's photo was taken at- This one was crazy, low-key. Low-key, when I first saw it on Reddit, I was like, ow. <laughs> But I was like, hey, interesting. Welcome back to the hmm. channel. And this video was supposed to come out a few days ago, but uh, VidCon happened and I got to meet a lot of cool creators. And I also got- Yeah, if you guys haven't seen like all his pictures, uh, uh, Morbid's video, uh, pictures, go check video. out, go check them out Sorry on Instagram. Cause Loki, they were like hella interesting. Will be one of my longest videos I've ever made. And uh, it's going to be a pain to edit that video. And before it's this- It's probably also going to be a pain to react to it. Check out my other social medias. And especially especially his instagram you guys liked it why not subscribe but yeah let's just get straight into this all right so it's the first one. four teenage mutant ninja turtle oh this tended to be the fourth movie in the live action series but was ultimately canceled the project left behind some so when they mean like you know the live action they mean like the one in the 90s not like you know the 2010s ones but it's like kevin eastman and peter laird brainstorm but i've had to say the movies they they were all right low-key they were all right secondary like the 90s ones with new powers and abilities Although production details are scarce, a Playmates toy catalog advertised a 1996 holiday season release and a multi-million dollar promotional campaign was planned. The main plot involved the Turtles and Splinter undergoing further mutations, with Leonardo gaining impetrable chrome-like skin, Raphael becoming more Ooh. monstrous, Ooh. Oh, and God. having telepathic powers at the cost of his eyesight, oh, okay. Michelangelo transforming into a more human-like appearance, and Splinter becoming a super rat. God and damn! The Hulk, experiencing new mutations were Ooh. also involved. Loki Splinter actually looks like someone that would work for Sh Shredder. God damn. The Playmates catalog suggested a potential post-apocalyptic dimension storyline supported by concept art of Evil April and Casey. Though the film was never made, its influence persists in the franchise. The idea of further mutations was reused in the final season of the original animated series, and the next mutation subtitle was used for a short-lived live-action TV series. Concept from they the also, also, the they did it for this series, they, this animated series, and I'm pretty sure they also did it for like 2012, and also somewhat like Rise, so like, you know, they never really, you know, abandoned the idea of like, you know, um, muting the more so is a huge discovery mm. and from the looks of it it seems that the community but sometimes i feel like you know teams me and ninja turtles you know growing more can it be interesting after all it's not like we're able to watch the full movie because it was never produced toon jam toon jam is a pc game released by turner interactive in collaboration with cartoon network in 1995 the package also included a mm. bonus how does this look? VHS tape with clips from cartoon network's intensive cartoon library both the game and the video were hosted by Moxie from The Moxie Show. Music videos created with the software were featured in commercials on Cartoon Network around the time of the game's release. The game is a multimedia video creator similar to Microsoft 3D Movie Maker. Players can make music videos using music, backgrounds, and characters from classic Cartoon Network shows like The Jetsons and Yogi Bear. Oh, hold up! Completed music videos could be saved to a floppy disk. Additionally, the CD-ROM functions as an audio CD, featuring 25 tracks based on Hanna-Barbera cartoon theme songs. The game included a tape called Jam and Video, which featured music and dance-themed episodes from cartoons like The Flintstones, Tom and Jerry, and Droopy. The tape also- I really question why cartoons still don't do shit like this! Like in the 90s and like 2000s, like, you know, no matter what, we would get any type of collab or any type of gaming collab with any franchise. Like, you know, it was Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and Disney, and for some reason, they don't do shit like this!
Like, I feel like people would actually enjoy it if, like, you know, they did more shit like this, but it's like, no, they don't do anything like this. Like, if this, if this came out now, but with, you know, a little bit of modern slash, like, older Cartoon Network characters, then I feel like people would play this shit, but it's like, ah. So provided instructions to contact your cable provider. Because low, low key, if this was a, a new a new thing where it, it features like you know newer Cartoon Network characters like on a Pregnant Creek, um, a few Teen Titans Go people, and then a few like older characters, I would actually like you know check it out for a little bit. Like even if it wasn't for me, the game's rarity might be partly due to negative reviews, particularly from CNET. Before its rediscovery, the only in-game footage available out of the CNET review was a commercial uploaded to YouTube by RetroCCN in 2013. On February 20th, 2021, YouTuber KillaFloyd67 rediscovered and uploaded the game's ISO file to archive.org. On January 19th, 2024, internet archive user Mustache Duct Tape unearthed and uploaded the complete bonus jamming video VHS tape to archive.org, making this piece of lost media found media. The Barnyard Test Pitch. Oh yeah, this. The Barnyard was a TV series that aired on Nickelodeon from 2007 to Clear. 2010 and on Nintendo in 2011. The show was Barnyard. Around 1999, a test pitch for the series was created. The short titled The Barnyard was produced by DNA Productions for Steve Udekirk's O Entertainment and advertised with the tagline, What do animals do when humans aren't watching? Although the pitch was never released, footage can be found in a 2005 teaser trailer for The Barnyard film, and screenshots are available on an archive backup of DNA's website. While it was rumored to be a pilot for the show, director Todd Grimes clarified in a tweet thread that it was a test pitch, not a pilot. On December 20th, 2022, YouTube user BuildShip discovered more footage from the test pitch on the behind the scenes DVD of the Barnyard voice actors. On January 20th, 2024, YouTube user Live DJ Rock uploaded the full test pitch, which was found from a VHS listing on eBay, making the pitch available to the public. Two days later on January Loki, when I first saw this, Loki, when I like when when it was I, I first like released, I was kind of excited, Loki. Cause Loki, I really like you know the Barnyard movie. I didn't I didn't like the show that much, but like you know the actual movie, I actually really enjoyed it. So I was like, oh shit, oh shit, okay, okay. Then when I actually watching it, it's like okay, certain stuff is like still in like the actual movie and then you know somewhere in the show. So I was like, all right, so they didn't remove a whole bunch of stuff. Some of the stuff they use in like the pitch is still in the movie. And I'm like, all right, all right. Whoever released it, thank the Lord, because goddamn, I already like the movie. January 22nd, 2024, Yoshi Killer 2S, a prominent figure in the Lost Media Wiki community, clarified some things. He said, One of my friends reached out to Steve Utiker. Oh, wh what is that in the background? So the Holy crap. That in the pitch were apparently from a separate animation test that had no relation to the Nick pitch. He also said that he didn't have a copy of the pitch and is very happy that it reappeared online. It's good that there's some clarification on the other screenshots that don't appear on the pitch, but at least somebody has found the complete barnyard pitch and is now available online. The Boondocks Pilot. Oh yeah, Boondocks this one too! I forgot this one released too! Film from 2005 to 2014. The show followed brothers. I for, I, I, low key, when I said I forgot the Boondocks um, pilot with the original, like, you know, voice actor in it, like, design, also came out this year. Plot sometimes involving celebrities. In 2003, Fox Network commissioned a six-minute pilot for an animated series based on the popular comic strip that inspired the business. like, you know. The series creator, Aaron Magruder, collaborated with film producer and director Reginald Hudlin on the pilot that Fox had commissioned. Magruder encountered numerous challenges during the production of the Fox pilot. In an interview with avclub.com, Magruder said, We did our best to do a Fox show. But frankly, I don't think the difficulties we had at Fox would be exclusive to Fox. I just think broadcast hmm. television, in general, is a very restrictive place. It's tough to be funny because there are so many eyeballs and there's so much money at stake that I think everything is just kind of overthought. And also, sometimes like Fox is a little bit like more strict, if we're, if we're like being honest, low-key. It's really a rigid landscape, and you can honestly see it in the show. In the summer of 2004, it was officially announced that Fox had rejected the Boondocks pilot. Around the same time, Cartoon Network showed interest in airing the pilot on its Adult Swim block. 
Mike Lazo, vice president of programming for Fox Network and Adult Swim, commented Swim that the pilot felt watered down and assured Magruder that, due to Cable's more lenient policies, he could create the show he envisioned. Cartoon Network then picked up the boondocks for a 15-episode order, and its success led to a four-season run on Adult Swim. The Fox pilot remained unreleased until May 7, 2016, when series producer Carl Jones shared a 21-second clip on his Twitter. This clip revealed that the pilot had an animation style more similar to the comic strip, as opposed to the anime-influenced art yeah, style. Yeah, so, because, like, you know, it didn't, clip, Huey Freeman and it didn't look like this, like, where his hair is bigger, or how Jasmine's hair is like. There it's, are unconfirmed reports like, hold up, I'm waiting for them to, like, show the clip today. a little bit, just so I... On February 17, 2024, an unknown user called Cal Eastwood uploaded the full six minute. Yeah, so like this. So, uh, it is Huey had like, uh, wait, I said Huey. Pilot, oh, 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 I'm talking about. Like. He had, uh, cornrows, and then, like, his hair wasn't that big. And also, they, they were fucking fighting over, um, messed up, um, white air forces. I, I don't even know what the shoes were. Hershey's <laughs> Chocolate World. But I was like, God damn, I really like that. Mm. 2013. The film was produced by Threshold Digital Research Labs, a division of Threshold Entertainment, which later created Food Fight. Ew! They... Hershey's really big 3D show also contributed oh. to the early stages of Food Fight. Okay, so I won't have expectations for this, because, like, if you guys actually seen the, the, uh, film, the actual movie from Food really Fight, or, you know, just, you know, the Nostalgia Critic episode of it, with a stereotypical it is pretty trash. Oh, the okay, history of yeah. Chocolate. The show is soon interrupted actually, by wait. Proctor, a 3D animated character who changes the direction direction with show tunes, gags, and playful 3D effects. After tasting a Hershey's kiss, Proctor realizes that chocolate Okay, yeah, this looks this looks a little bit of a uh, food fight. Fantastic on its own. So like the, the animation looks like a little bit better than Food Fight, but viewing. holy crap, that's Hershey's great chocolate factory. The animation in just in 2013, just... which in turn was replaced by Hershey's Great Candy Expedition in 2022. In 2015, a low-quality cropped camera recording of the film was uploaded to YouTube by user A66056. Due to the 3D nature of the film and the recording method, this yeah, version is uh, representative of the original content. In cause, 2020, cause God damn, what the hell? Okay, a full never mind. HD copy with pre-recorded lines from the host to user Ziggy Kashmir. Both the monoscopic and stereotypical versions were uploaded to the Internet Archive on the same day, and you can finally view these clips at home. Bravely, also known as Try to Smile Again, Lost Song. What Try is to this Smile one? Again is a placeholder title for a snippet of an unidentified song that was uploaded to spiritofradio.ca in 2005. Merrick didn't provide any details about the snippet's origins or recording specifics. Then, on May 24th, Unknown song clip, try not to smile again. Lost Wave uploaded the snippet to YouTube. Since then, numerous re-uploads of the snippet have surfaced on YouTube. The precise lyrics remain uncertain, but the frequently reported version heard by most listeners is A million people must have stayed together. I can make you smile if you are sometimes crying. Hmm. Get your problems, try to smile again. Because of the okay, I gotta, re I gotta resist lyrics, this song the after, because hold up. may have originated from sound a interesting. speaking country, with several suggesting that the accent resembles Eastern European. Some have drawn comparisons between the singer and the vocalist of the Russian band, however you say this, who primarily sings in Russian. On December 19th, 2023, Merrick from Spirit of Radio left a comment about the song, stating, Hello, people of the forums. I have not been on here for a long time, but I've seen- Yeah, damn, holy shit. Time. I, I am not reading all that. You, you, I'm just gonna add the meme head, right here. When I clicked on it, I found this post and it all came back to me. After all these months, here are your answers. A long time ago in late 2004, me and my friend turned 17 and had our own cars with tape players. We found a blank tape at the side of the road and we decided to give it a try. This tape has since been lost. We heard this song but didn't know where from but we knew it was in our brains somewhere. I recorded this with my phone, hence the bad quality. But we spent months trying to find this song, and I came across this place and uploaded it. I forgot all about this as I was a 17-year-old kid, but I do in fact remember this song. It is from Italy and was played at many discos and parties. Uh, oh. The song is called Hold My Hand Tight by Rico. But I can't remember his last name. Hold my hand it's tight. Mentioning that on all right, all right, I, I, I'm listening to the after because I'm like, I, I want to, I want to hear it now. I, low key, I want to hear what the song is now. Others have surfaced, reportedly from individuals claiming to be Merrick. 
However, it's doubtful that any of these are genuine. Hey folks, I was wrong. On February 14th, 2024, an extended snippet of the song was posted on YouTube by user Joe Heidi. The video's description stated, I recorded it from Estonian radio. Can't remember the exact station, early or mid 1990s. Early 2000s. Are, are they gonna play it? Are, are, is Morbi gonna play it or not? Because it's copyrighted. People could identify songs. This song was never identified. So, two days ago, I discovered that 30 seconds of the song is on YouTube and noticed that many people are interested. So, I uploaded the full song, at least almost. The extended snippet featured the majority of the complete song, lasting 3 minutes and 6 seconds. However, the first verse was missing from the snippet, indicating that the song was still partially incomplete. Despite this, the artist and title of the song remained unidentified. Then, on February 26th, 2024, the song was recognized as Braverly by Beat Boy, and it was officially uploaded on February 27th. Okay, I... Star Milkshake Bar, Phineas and Ferb Song. Phineas and Ferb... Wait, Phineas and Ferb? How, how do... Series, followed the okay. Adventures I gotta listen to the song the after voice, the last the one, but... Out to launch, but they, the they had a, a lost one? After the kids, ...which sparks a mission to find it in a rocket. This leads them to discover the... Oh, uh, the bar, the bar, the bar um, song where they're... Of the same name. ...where they were trying to find, like, fuel for Candace. ...for Disney's Hollywood Studios, but it never saw a physical release. This longer version of the song was showcased at a Phineas and Ferb meet and greet and was captured by the YouTube family, Sen, Momo, and I YouTube channel. On December 28th, 2020, Supersonic Style shared the instrumental version, originally a hidden track from the game Phineas and Ferb in the Transport Nators of, Nators of Doom. Doom. Finally, on March 10th, 2024, mm. Charter School Girl uploaded the complete song, giving fans access to the full Phineas and Ferb song. Spy vs. Spy the fact that Phineas and Ferb have one that I didn't know that is kind of crazy, low key. Like maybe it wasn't like like that big, and like you know most of Phineas and Ferb's like songs, whether it's actually like a, a song song or just something they use in the background for like an episode. Like you know sometimes it gets released because most of their songs had like I don't know like a CD or an album like a release release. But the fact that, like that one didn't is I would kind of say kind of crazy. But then again, you know. Dan could have also used it for one of his, like, you know, other two shows, like, um, Milo's Murphy's Law and, um, Hamster and Gretel, but, um, okay then, alright. The oh, Island hmm. Caper. Hmm. Spy versus like, Spy. It, like, not interesting, but it's like... It's a multiplayer platform it game. Actually, based uh, on that something was comp, lost. Hmm. Developed by Kimco, it was released... Oh, the these two niggas from, uh, from Mad! These th Essentially a port of the Commodore 64 version. Although plans were in place to localize and release it on the NES in the United States in 1989, I always forget the like these two. Um, I always forget their names. I, I just know they're from uh, Mad. So I'm just gonna say black and white. I always forget like they had like more lore into them. And I just never knew because like you know I was just thinking they were just made for Mad. On December 1st, 2015, a prototype ROM Spy versus Spy, Black Spy, White Spy. dollars though the final sale price remains unknown. No acquired prototypes were shared online until 2023, making this the sole identified prototype. Then, on March 20th, 2024, a user known as the Nicktoons Fan 2010 uploaded another prototype ROM, discovered on the ROM sharing site Vim's Lair. It was later revealed on Discord that this prototype had been sent to Hidden Palace by the Video Game History Foundation in 2021, although it hadn't been released at that time. Seinfeld, the right. gun slash the bet. Seinfeld, a very popular comedy sitcom, graced American screens for nine seasons. All right, is this a lost episode July one? 1989 to May 14th, 1998. Created by Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. It stands as one of the most impactful sitcoms in television history. The episode known as The Bet, also recognized as The Gun, was an episode planned for season 2, penned by Larry Charles. Originally slated for February 13th, 1991, it was replaced by The Phone Message. This installment aimed to unveil Kramer's first name as Conrad, later retconned to Cosmo in season 6, The Switch. However, discomfort rippled through the cast during a table reading. Julia Lewis Dreyfus's character, Elaine, made a grim joke referencing self harm and the JFK assassination. Jerry Seinfeld voiced the struggle to infuse humor oh, into the plot. Oh, was the, okay, the never director mind, never deemed mind. the subject matter unfit for comedy, the director even confronted Larry Charles, prompted by shared concerns from an NBC executive, resulting in the episode's cancellation. The script remained elusive for many years. Circulated oh. among buyers, 
from online platforms that change on April 2nd, 2024, when Reddit user HBO GOT script for the unprint. Oh, no way. Archive. <laughs> no way. No way. No way. Pushing boundaries, the bet faced cancellation early in the show's run. Larry Charles suggests that had it aired in later seasons, it might have found a place in the lineup but its darker themes may have been premature given the series quest to broader viewership at that time. Right. Believe it or not, before Sweet. this became found media, the full script was actually listed on eBay. Sesame Street at Night. What was Sesame this on Street eBay? Night was a special PBS okay, broadcast that aired on. Okay, now is this another Sesame Street like lost one? The show's 1,000th episode. Or is this a, a unique title featuring a question mark? Was a nod to a critic's comment upon Sesame Street's initial release, suggesting it was too good for kids. The special was hosted by film critic and Today Show co-host Gene Shalit who had previously appeared in a Today Show skit where Bert disguised himself as Shallot, leading to oh. a muscle look-alike of Shallot. <laughs> what, the, what the hell? Notable segments included Grover and Lena Horne performing How Do You Do, while Betamaxes, which are analog recording systems, were available in some households back then, recordings of the special were scarce for many years. Limited evidence, including press releases, photos, and mentions in Jim Henson's Red Book blog, confirmed mm. the existence of the thousandth episode. However, it wasn't until April 8th, 2024, that the full special surfaced on YouTube, courtesy of Pastorous Archive. You can view the full episode for yourself as it's still up. Okay, I, I gotta watch it after, because Loki you want us, I have not seen, like, like a uh, full, like, Sesame Street episode in, like, years, honestly. Like, like, watched it, but, like... Referred to as right, back doors and ask for other unsettling images that evoke a similar feeling of unease. In response, another user introduced the idea of the back rooms. This concept quickly spread, often with the original eerie image being shared alongside the story, cementing the widespread notion of the back rooms. However, the images used for the posts dates back way earlier. It first appeared on 4chan's B Random Board on April 8th, 2018, labeled as a simply creepy image. The images filed name 13423779401360.jpg could potentially be a Unix timestamp, which converts to July 15th, 2012. This suggests that the image might have been initially posted on that date, but then saved by someone who later reposted it in 2018. However, because 4chan regularly deletes old threads and archiving can be costly, many 2012 archives are outdated or exclude the most popular boards, making it challenging to track down the original post. Consequently, no threads from that time has been found yet. Or it could be that the file name is not a Unix timestamp and doesn't trace back to 4chan. After a while of searching old archives, people have found a new thread God that includes the backroom's image. This image being posted back in March of 2011. Then, a searcher decided to search on Twitter for the photo where he found this 2019 tweet that contains the original 4chan post oh. and lore. And want to know what was underneath that Twitter thread? Well, no other than the origins to that photo. The Twitter user says, for what it's I worth, probably I found probably the found the source image here. Exchangeable image file 2000 format is from 2002. So now we know what year this photo was taken, but we have another question to answer. Where was this photo taken? Well, it was taken at a Hobby Town store in Oshkosh, Wisconsin that was renovating one of their rooms for an RC car racetrack. On the website, you do find the original photo of the back. Oh, oh, okay. The so room, they just didn't have shit there. Before. Okay. Before this building was a hobby town, it used to be a Roner's furniture store until 1994. YouTuber Farrell McGuire found an old newspaper that shows the original backrooms building when it used to be a furniture store. Jesus from Christ. She, just Jesus. How cool is that? According to Farrell McGuire, Roner's furniture store expanded into a second building where the backroom's photo would eventually be taken. But in 1994, the furniture store closed down to make way for Hobby Town. In 2002, Hobby Town did some renovations on the second floor to make an RC race car track. And before the renovations, they took two photos, which are now known as the back rooms. This is some bittersweet news. It's cool that we finally uh, found the location. All right, that, that's good at least. That's good at least because God. Knowing that the original backroom's location is now destroyed and replaced by an RC track. 
I mean, you can still technically visit the location, but it doesn't look the same anymore. It doesn't look the same, and also, everyone in the virtual carbon. It somewhat doesn't also feel the same, like Loki. It, it's not gonna feel. You're not gonna like feel the same feeling, like when you actually go there. People have been trying to solve for many years now. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Oh no! Right, we got another song one. I was gonna say, man, God damn, how many like lost songs did do, do, do we find this year? The 17 second audio clip would be uploaded to What's That Song? Mid 80s bad quality, everyone knows Carl 92 would ask people for help in finding the full version. Carl 92 would vaguely answer some questions on the form post he'd make, but then suddenly vanish shortly after. Carl 92 would pretty much say that he found the audio clip from an old DVD backup, and that was pretty much what everybody would be left with. People eventually did what they go on to do in situations like this, mm. by trying to make out the lyrics okay. of the song and just track down where it came from. Unfortunately, the song would go unsolved until April of 2024. A Reddit post would be made titled EKT is Found, find heavy, heavy NSFW Warning. It turns out that Everybody Knows That was actually a song called Ulterior Motives, a track used in an old 1980s pornography movie. If you're still curious, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, uh, he said an old pornography movie. Like, God, God damn. Like, I was thinking it was just some like '80s, like um, some '80s like girly type of song. Like, how to put I don't know how to explain it, but like some '80s like you know girl type of song. But like, okay, never mind, never mind. Let's continue, but, uh, uh goddamn, goddamn. It is called Angels of Passion, and at the 1 hour, 7 minutes, and 30 second mark, you can hear the Lost Media song. The artist who made this infamous piece of music is called Christopher St. Booth, and is mainly known for creating music and pornographic films. I guess everybody now knows that. Super Mario 64 stars Secret Screamer. On August 15th, got another one? I, was, I, I, I see what he did right there. I see what he did right there. Loki, I see what he did right there. Super Mario 64. What is, the, what is this one? Which was deleted in late 2012. During its five year run, the video gained significant popularity, amassing over 698,000 views. It was widely shared on forums to scare users. Edited with Windows Movie Maker 2, the video included scrolling text explaining steps to unlock Luigi. Lotus recorded his screen with a flip phone. For authenticity, this is a family recreation. Toad's Tool 64, he modified the castle, changing Mario's outfit and castle textures. Initially, the video featured songs like Whisper in the yep, Dark entered the alt and The Chosen by the Planet from Final Fantasy VII, and then later muted to avoid copyright issues. The video began with Mario in the starting area, running into the castle. The entire video took place oh, in fuck, the it's castle, Martin. mainly in the courtyard. <laughs> Several the text prompts appear throughout the video, providing steps to unlock Luigi. One step involved kicking a boot. Why do I feel like I'm about to get? There's about to be a jump scare. Why do I feel like this about to be a jump scare? Jump scare. Minutes of these steps, the final prompt instructed viewers to press A on the wall, leading to an abrupt cut of the zombie jump scare from the infamous Kfi Coffee commercial, aka Ghost Car Video. Trolled alone. The video was likely deleted due to hate and death threats, as suggested by a 2011 Facebook description. This video was done. Loki, when I say Loki, when I say I've never like heard of of this before, Loki, but I'm like, okay, the way this is looking, the bad quality, the dark colors and all that, I was thinking we were about to get like some type of like jump scare. I wasn't thinking it was gonna be like an edited jump scare. I was thinking like something else scary was gonna happen in the game and then like something scary just came out. I, I didn't think it was gonna cut to some zombie reason why I was thinking about oh yeah, Loki. I would not be shocked if a lot of people believe this. Loki, I would not be shocked. And out of complete boredom. And yet, people still wish to leave hateful comments. Therefore, commenting has been disabled. I mean, Loki. If I didn't, if I didn't like do this, I would, I would probably I'd be entertained from this. Loki getting scared. Late reaction captures about eight seconds from the start and the final twenty seconds. On May 30th, 2024, sorry, there's no sound. And Sendexmon discovered new footage after reaching out to a YouTube user who had privated a reaction to the screamer. Sadly, this piece of media isn't fully found due to the low quality reaction videos, but at least there's proof that this video exists. And I do have hope on this video being fully found this year. Because if you scroll through the Lost Media Wiki forums, you do see a lot of activity of people talking about this Lost Screamer video, which could be a good sign that this video may be fully found later this year. 
Christine Chubbick. This is a bonus clip I was about to say, I was about to say, I was about to say, all right, Loki, I feel like it could be fun to see. Like, let's be honest, I feel like a lot of people have seen the video, but what what is this one? Florida, running from 1973 to 1974, it featured Christine Chubbick discussing community issues in Sarasota and Bradenton. Both the show and Christine were praised for their depth, but low ratings led to executive interference, frustrating Chubbick and contributing to her on air at the start of one episode. This incident, along with their show's low viewership and the limited recording technology at that time, most of Chubbick's prior run as host is considered lost media. Every time when a lost media YouTuber talks about Christine Chubbick, they normally talk about the tragedy and the search for the offing video. Mm -hmm. However, we are not talking about the tragedy. But in case you are wondering about the status of the offing tape, the news station allegedly has a tape that shows it, but has sworn to never release the footage out of respect. But somehow the real audio from the video has leaked and that's all we'll ever get from it. On a lighter note, some Christine Chubbick lost media has been found. On February uh, so 29th, 2024, prominent Chubbick researcher Tape Signal revealed she had been in contact with John Griffin, who created an e-network documentary about Chubbick's mm, life. Interesting. During the uh, 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 Griffin mentioned he had a complete episode of Suncoast Digest hosted by Christine Chubbick focused on zoning issues related to local hospitals. On April 23rd, 2024, Griffin fulfilled his promise and shared the full 25-minute recording with Tape Signal, who then uploaded it to YouTube. According to Tape Signal, at least he got to upload his episode. Like Loki, like Loki, at least he got to upload his episode. Cause like, imagine recording an episode and then either it got cut or it just never got released because of something. But it's like now you're at least allowed to like upload it. Like, you gotta be, you gotta be glad he, he was able to upload it. Like out of respect. Two thousand away from hitting two hundred fifty thousand subscribers. Ooh, I need more Which it would be pretty cool to hit. But yeah, I'm glad to be back. I have to get on my grind session again because my next video is going to be extremely long. I don't know if it'll hit one hour, but I am talking about 90 plus topics. So maybe I'll get other YouTubers. Yeah, to yeah, video. okay. That's definitely going to hit an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this might be an hour long video. You know, in particular, oh. but I did get to meet a lot of content creators over the weekend. So who knows? Maybe one of them might want to hop on. So I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys. Later, Morbid. Sarah's, that was the video. We guys did a video. All right, all right. If I had to say, like, my favorite lost media from this one, I would probably say the the Barnyard one and then the Boondocks one just because I'm a big fan of the Boondocks, right? And then I just really like the Barnyard, like, movie. So if I had to say, like, my favorite ones, I would probably say, like, these two. But Loki, the some of these are, like, my first time hearing them. Like, Loki, when I said that I've never seen the Sharshi's 3D show, I didn't even know uh, Phineas and Ferb had, like, a lost song, which... Because Loki is, like, you know, when you hear Phineas and Ferb songs, you, you just think of, like, ones that are, like, bangers or ones that are probably underrated. But I never really thought that something ever got, like, a song ever got lost. Because most of the time, all of them are literally on albums or like on videos or like something so it's like you know you never really think that a famous and Ferb one would ever get lost but yeah guys that was the video hope you guys enjoyed the video please subscribe to the bell and get notified when i upload a new video comment what do you guys want me to react to next comment what was your favorite lost media from this video from morbid and um yeah that was the video i'll see you guys later bye Hups.